My name's Andy Tiller. I'm Vice President of Product Marketing with Asia Info Linkage. And today I'm going to be talking about how China Mobile is using real-time big data analytics in China. So first, a very quick word about Asia Info Linkage for those of you who don't know us. Um, so we are the number one supplier of telecom IT software and services in Asia, uh, where we have a uh, full suite of business support systems, BSS, and operational support systems, OSS, um, which serve more than a billion customers in, in Asia. Our um, number one market is uh, our domestic market in China. The company's based in, uh, in Beijing with offices across the region. And uh, there we have more than half the market share with uh, big operators. And today I'm going to talk about one particular piece of work we've done with the biggest operator in the world, uh, China Mobile. So we've already talked quite a bit about um, the way that network operators need to unlock the value that they have in their customer data, their customer knowledge, uh, in order to combat the decline in traditional service revenues and to combat the threat and, and exploit the opportunity of working with over-the-top partners. And we've also alluded to the fact that, in principle, the information that customers, uh, that operators can get about their customers is much richer than the over-the-top players can get. Uh, in principle, an operator knows about everything its customers are doing on the network, whereas an over-the-top player might know a lot about what its customers are doing with its own app or its own website, but, for instance, nothing about uh, what its competitors' customers are doing. So there's value to be created here, and operators are beginning to uh, exploit that and monetize it. So I've shown here just, I uh, hope you can read this, just a, a few simple examples, um, and I've categorized them by how much the analysis requires to be in real time and how, how much personal information is included in the analysis. So uh, the market segmentation, how fine detailed that is. So in the case of SFR's uh, uh, footfall tracking application, which uh, tracks uh, footfall, for instance, away from football stadiums, that doesn't need to be real time and it doesn't need to be uh, segmented. It can be completely anonymous and that data is still valuable. It could be used to help plan better transportation and so on for the city. Um, earlier on, Richard talked about uh, Telefonica's uh, or Telefonica Digital Smart Step service. So that's similar in terms of tracking footfall, but it's actually a bit more specific because some customer profile information is included, sort of age and gender and so on. So that, that helps to, uh, you know, to, to be able to tell which types of people are in which locations at which times. So it's a little bit more specific. Uh, Verizon's precision offering goes a bit further, and that actually offers uh, advertisers and marketers quite access to quite specific market segments, so uh, you know, particular customer groups that they can then target their advertising to. Um, but none of these analyses need to be done in real time. By contrast, you've got uh, the traffic location information, which does need to be in real time. So operators such as Vodafone track the location and the velocity of SIM cards on the network, provide that information to TomTom, which can then improve the accuracy of its uh, data on, you know, where are the traffic jams right now. And that, of course, can be completely anonymous. We don't care what type of users they are. Uh, we just want to know where the jams are. But um, the application I'm going to talk about is with China Mobile, where in this case, they are using both real-time analysis and very precise target market segments uh, as part of their big data analytics to, to target uh, specific mobile marketing offers. Um, so this, this is the, the application I'm going to talk about. And, and this is actually the, the, the real-world example, one of the, the real-world examples. Um, I'll come back to the cultural context in a minute, but um, the, the, the way this works is China Mobile has an quite a lot of partners who provide digital services. In, for example, in this case, uh, a partner that provides an app for uh, people who want to buy a new car. It uh, provides reviews of cars, used car prices, that kind of thing. And uh, so China Mobile promotes these partner services through its digital services portal. And uh, they're using big data analytics to uh, target specific promotions of these partner services to their customers in the right context. So in this example, Steve wants to buy a new car. 
his user experience is quite like internet search advertising. In fact, he is doing an internet search on his phone, probably with Baidu rather than Google, which is the big internet uh, search company in China. And uh, when he types in relevant terms, he receives a push offer from China Mobile for you know, the cool car report service or, or whatever. And um, so using that, uh, this sort of context-aware marketing, where the context is Steve searching for a new car, uh, China Mobile has measured that they, they increased the uh, success rate on this campaign from 1.5% or so, which is similar to internet search advertising, if they issue the campaign generically to uh, a, an identified target market segment, they've increased it to over 4% uh, by doing it at the right time in, in the right context. So this is similar to um, the uh, previous uh, speaker from Pontus who said, you know, twice the, twice the effectiveness if you present the offer in the right context. Now, this is, of course, of course, there is a cultural context here. This particular application might not be socially acceptable or even legal in Europe, but the technology uh, can be used in a lot of different ways. So I'm going to talk about the technology, and you could apply it very differently from this. Uh, the technology itself is actually our uh, C-cubed product, uh, which stands for Convergent Context Awareness Center. So what do you do with it? Well, the, f the first thing you do is you, uh, you gather the information from the network usage customers using the data on the network. You turn the data packets into structured data, which uh, allows you to create customer insights. So what's happening is that all of the data packets from uh, China Mobile's, both their, their mobile network and their carrier Wi-Fi network, are being uh, processed. Uh, we use optical splitters in the network, and all of the data packets, signaling and user plane data, go through a stream computing engine, which structures it on the fly in real time. So packets go in, and out the other end comes um, essentially structured data about which subscribers accessed which content and websites, used which applications, on which devices, in which locations, and all of that goes into the database. And then that's supplemented with profile information from the business support system so we know more about who these subscribers are. So they're actually you know, male, female, high ARPU, prepaid, postpaid, and so on. So you, you end up with a, a database, which typically in, in China Mobile's case, they store about two months' worth of data uh, about who's doing what, where, <coughs> and when. The, the next thing uh, you can do with this is to mine the database to extract specific target market segments. There's a lot of information in there that you can use to, to find the right people for a campaign. And um, so you probably can't read this, but I've made this really over-specific to demonstrate the kinds of things you can do. So this is searching for men between the ages of 15 and 30 with high ARPU and high data usage who use specific... Uh, music applications on their phones and uh, use those several times a month and are fans of a particular music genre or band identified by the websites they've been to or the search terms they've used. So you can actually you know, query the database and extract a target market of a specific set of customers that you can then create a campaign for. Um, so the next thing to do is to create the campaign. This might be a music offer and the uh, the, the real-time processing also comes into play in the execution of the campaign. So in a traditional static campaign, you just send out SMS messages to everyone in the target customer group with a link and hope they get it at the right time. But there's nothing more annoying, even if the ad's relevant, than getting it if you're you know, busy with something else or asleep. So, so what happens is that the, the real-time engine again comes into play. You can set some trigger rules which uh, uh, set when the campaign is delivered to each individual customer. So essentially the ideal context. So it might be, for instance, when the customer opens the music app on their phone. It could be when they do that in a particular location, such as at a music festival where the, the offer is particularly relevant. So in that case, um, you know, then what happens is for each individual customer, the engine identifies when this context arises, and at that point it triggers the campaign. So essentially the whole thing waits until the a, a better moment to deliver the campaign. Um, so that's how it works. The, um, uh, and that's how Steve, in our initial example, received the ad at the moment when he was searching for the car. But uh, um, the music uh, example is a little bit more sophisticated. So let's just recap it. 
So, and the idea here is that the operator and a partner, let's suppose it, it's Spotify in this case, could be any music streaming company, but there's a partnership between the OTT player and the operator. And they want to target people who are using a different application, you know, a, comp a competitor to Spotify. It could be Napster or Deezer or something. So, um, and this offer they've put together is uh, particularly attractive for fans of a particular music genre, perhaps Metallica fans, and uh, it's free to anyone to use as a free trial going on associated with a music festival. Roskilde is a big festival in Denmark and Metallica were playing for the first time this year since 1984 or something, so uh, that's why this example. Um, but if you look at what's, what's happening, the first thing is that the target customer group is defined based on two things. First of all, the customer profile, the young, young men and the ARPU and so on. But secondly, the dynamic data from the network. So, you know, which, which, uh, we can identify which of these people are actually fans of the right music genre and which of them are using music apps on their phone, uh, particularly competitors to Spotify. And then the execution of the campaign happens now, when the customer is at the music festival and when they open the comp competitor's music app. So this is kind of deliberately over-specific to kind of give you an idea of the kinds of things you can do with the technology. Um, but of course, the biggest question that arises here is you know, privacy. You certainly wouldn't expect to be able to use customers' data like that, at least not without an opt-in. And, and so the trick is, you know, how do you get com customers comfortable with opting in to their data being used like that uh, and uh, you know, to, to receive marketing campaigns. And really, I think there's you know, two, two very important factors, incentives and control. And you know, incentives come uh, are not a one-time only thing. You know, whatever incentives you give to a, a customer to, to opt in to mobile marketing in the first place, you need to make sure they want to stay opted in. And the trick to doing that is to give them a great customer experience so they don't want to go away. The paradox of this is that in order to give customers a better experience, you need to use more personal data. So you target them with things that are only relevant to them, only at the right time. And the more personal data you use, the more of an invasion of privacy it is. So there's this kind of paradox. And you know, the theory goes, you, you know, as long as customers are getting a good experience, hopefully they won't mind. But uh, that's not quite enough. You do need to make sure that you give customers control. So if they don't like what they're getting, they can opt out in real time. There's nothing more annoying than opting out and still getting those marketing messages. So the, the system has to support a real-time opt-out. You know, uh, and that, that means you know, this real-time capability that we've been talking about really is, is, is vitally important across the whole service. So um, uh, one final comment on that. You know, um, giving incentives to end customers. Actually, this is one thing China Mobile is doing with, uh, with all this uh, you know, real-time data they're collecting. They're actually making it available to end customers directly. And the reason this is useful is because customers can then actually see for the first time which applications on their phones are generating which data charges on their phone bills, which is something that most operators struggle to be able to explain. And, um, and so here, actually, China Mobile not only tells customers which apps are generating which data usage, they also proactively warn customers about the apps they haven't perhaps used very much yet, but if they do use them, they'll generate a lot of data usage and a lot of charges. So, so they can um, essentially proactively help their customers to optimize the data usage and not, not use too much data. And that um, actually has, uh, the increased transparency has enabled China Mobile to eliminate 30,000 support calls about bill data transparency just in one province, in Sichuan province, since they introduced this about 12 months ago. So it's making a difference. Um, and in summary then, the, the benefits here are both potentially both to the operator and to end customers. So the way China Mobile views this, they're first of all enabled to monetize their customer insights through more effective mobile marketing campaigns, twice the click-through rate that uh, they were getting before, more than twice. Uh, and at the same time, they're reducing the number of calls to the call center. So benefits to the operator. At the same time, the end customer's benefiting, getting uh, a much better experience of mobile marketing. Uh, in China, you do get spammed. If you have a China mobile, China Unicom phone, you get a lot of marketing messages. Uh, this improves the situation a lot. You get relevant ones. Uh, still in Chinese, unfortunately, so I can't understand them. But, um, and only at appropriate times. And also, the end customer benefits from this full transparency of their data charges. So thanks very much. I think that was it.